Okay, um, we'll now have a short presentation and demo by uh, Xi. Dr. Xi Yang is a, a network engineer at ESnet. Uh, until last year, he was a senior research scientist and, uh, and director of uh, R&D for MAX, uh, is Mid-Atlantic Mid Crossroads at uh, University of Maryland. Uh, SENSE is a collaboration project among ESnet, Caltech, um, Formulab, um, Argon, Bernal Company, and University of Maryland. And the project is led by Inder, the director of ESnet. Um, and the rest of it, uh, the, she's going to uh, give a short presentation. Okay, she, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, Alex, for the introduction. And so let me share my screen to get started. So uh, since I'm going to use uh, uh, the web browser and the terminal back and forth, and also PowerPoint slides, so I'm, I'm showing sure, sure my whole uh, desktop. And can you guys see my screen? Yep. OK, great. All right, so um, yeah, let me put it uh, in the first screen to begin with. Um, as uh, uh, Alex uh, just uh, um, mentioned, so uh, back, actually, just again, the, the title. And this, this, this is for the uh, Sense demo. So Sense um, is a project we started about uh, five years ago. And this is a, a collaboration uh, between um, many uh, institutes. And so the, uh, when we started this project, I think the, uh, the whole idea uh, is really to uh, look at uh, uh, how uh, Sense workflows uh, uh, will uh, use the, um, the network basically um, and many uh, the workflows, they really have uh, um, and distributed uh, facilities, um, devices, and people, right? So that they have to deal with the network um, uh, very um, frequently. And so, uh, the but look at the network um, landscape. Landscape is really really complex, right? So um, uh, even like for the uh, for the deal environment, we have a, a, a more normalized network. We still Look at like wide area networks, uh, regional networks, um, and campuses, and also your and uh, now your 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 um, your local hosts, end systems, your instruments, and uh, clusters. So it's it's very complex. It's typically a multi-domain, uh, multi-resource, and distributed infrastructure, right? So uh, since is going to um, um, uh, automate this um, uh, network end to end uh, using the STN approach. Um, so when we talk about SDN, right, the software defined network, I mean, SDN is actually a very broad, uh, very broad concept, right? So it's not a single technology. So it's actually very complex and homogeneous. Um, in the control plane, you got uh, all kinds of uh, um, uh, software stack, uh, all kinds of uh, API, right? Um, all the, uh, all the, all, the, all the domains and in a data plane, you look at layer one, layer two, layer three, and you have a point-to-point, -point, uh, multi-point technologies, and in some, some segments, you have a virtual private and, and network overlays. You also have a different uh, um, uh, kind of safety violations uh, over Q QS. And, and again, because we're dealing with end-to-end, -end, you have to look at uh, those, uh, those uh, end sites where we have uh, STMZs, and uh, end systems, uh, clouds, uh, HPC clusters, instruments, storage. Um, so uh, you have to figure out how to do a really stitch them together and uh, how to direct your flow and process me. There's not a lot of, uh, not of uh, challenge for, for the uh, impedance um, march. Uh, so this takes a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, oxygen. And uh, uh, we do not want your workflow, your science workflow really to, uh, to worry about this, this big oxygen. And so and that's why uh, we have a sense to, uh, to come in to fill, uh, fill uh, um, the gap, right? So since we really want to operate uh, between your workflow and, uh, and the SDN layer. Um, so since um, as a architecture design, so uh, it really uh, has uh, two uh, layers. Uh, so um, the, um, the layer uh, above is, a, is called a sense um, orchestrator. So it's really, uh, and the agent work with work with your workflow, so it uh, it sort of like uh, uh, help you to uh, to compose your service, to request your service, to interpret your intent, and to negotiate with uh, 
the whole system to, to get, get what you want. And then the bottom layer is the uh, so-called resource managers, which is really to, um, to become the agent for the, uh, for the uh, domains, for the uh, service providers. So here we are looking at, at, at um, uh, service-oriented architecture with uh, a consumer layer above and with a, a provider layer and, and at the bottom, right? So it's really like a, like a, like a market and you are trying to exchange your services. And um, what's unique for senses, we are using a, a model-driven approach. So every domain, every service provider is going to um, describe their resources as an uh, information model. We, we are actually using a, a, a semantic web-based uh, uh, model to make sense more uh, standardized. So this model is exchanged across the system. And the orchestrator is going to uh, aggregate the model. And so we have uh, like a so-called end-to-end infrastructure model. Uh, because we're using a semantic model, so it's very uh, information rich. So you can do a lot of things from, from those information like you do and um, like, much discovery and path finding, do uh, all kinds of like uh, orchestration reasoning, right? So that it, it, it can be, it can be uh, very, very um, sophisticated. And um, so uh, at the um, orchestration layer actually, and uh, it's really doing uh, a lot of uh, um, negotiation. This is a typical negotiation and a transaction system. And so uh, from here, we can actually give a uh, user a, a, a good interface, uh, both from the, um, the web UI and also from the uh, from a REST API. Uh, we help to translate the user's uh, intents uh, into the uh, services. So, so we can use, uh, so users can just uh, have some intuitive uh, description of what they want, then we can take care of REST to, to navigate them across the, the very complex uh, environment. And so from the bottom, all the, all the resource managers, they're going to actually help the providers to, to describe their, uh, their capacity, their capabilities, and the, the availability of, of the resources really uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a real time. So uh, yeah, here's, and I just uh, repeat what I had here. So we have all kinds of resource managers at this point. At this point we have uh, network resource managers. And we have and two flavors, one for Oscars, one for ASI, uh, developed by ESNet. And we also have uh, risk managers for the end of systems. Uh, we, we can actually take over uh, networking all the way into the uh, host network. So um, for, for, for since actually, um, we, we normally, I, I, if you are a scientist, right, you, you do not really need to actually to uh, Use sense directly because sense is really a, um, a mediation layer, a, a, a middleware system. So in the way we are um, um, anticipating uh, for the uh, science uh, workflow to use sense is firstly uh, we want to uh, integrate integrate sense into uh, uh, in the, the application workflow agent. So we have a uh, 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 REST API uh, for the loss bound. So you can actually uh, use. Uh, and uh, add to your uh, application codes or scripts or uh, web UI. And, and, uh, uh, and secondly, uh, we can integrate sense into uh, other middleware tools. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, Grip FTP, uh, Globals. And uh, right now we also have an integration with uh, uh, Big Data Express, which is another um, data transfer um, tool developed by, uh, by Ferminar. And, um, and besides uh, the data transfer, you can also uh, integrate things with uh, uh, like um, and data caching tools like uh, x disk cache or the uh, name, uh, data network cache, NBN. And, and uh, also um, for um, things to be really deployed in the, uh, in the, in the field, right? So um, it, it takes uh, some minimal work to get a sense started. Uh, so, uh, we had to typically work with a uh, uh, side admin and uh, for the like, initial development, I mean, uh, initial deployment and do a configuration. And then we can probably do a, a little bit of hand holding uh, with, uh, um, with the users. In this case, it could typically be someone is in charge of uh, the, the IT for your, for, your, for, your, for your science domain, right? Or it could be a, a postdoc or could be some uh, an, a network admin. So we help them to, uh, to, to work on the, um, the workflow scripting and, uh, uh, and compose the intents uh, suitable for their uh, workflows. 
And uh, uh, after that, I think users should be pretty much on a, on a ser uh, self service. Um, sometimes we also work with admins to do um, some troubleshooting. And in this system, we have enough uh, uh, information uh, we can actually um, use for uh, for for um, troubleshooting or or um, triangulating the uh, the problems. So uh, the, here's, a, here's a diagram of the uh, sense test bed. So sense test bed has uh, has a uh, topology across uh, um, the whole nation and pretty much over the uh, DOE's uh, uh, footprint uh, with uh, ESnet at the core and, and uh, it's distributed across many maps and the universities. And recently, we also have deployed sense to the and to the AutoGo domains. Uh, AutoGo is a, uh, is a consortium of uh, an, uh, RE and, and networks across the um, US, um, Europe, and uh, Asia. Um, so um, we have uh, deployed uh, sense um, resource managers across uh, some of those domains and also to the uh, end site, like uh, for example, and, uh, the CERN and, D and DTN uh, deployed by Surflet. Uh, we have uh, now have uh, our uh, Sense, um, sense resource managers there. And so this gives us uh, the uh, test bed that we can, we can play with and also uh, this is uh, what we uh, do for uh, demonstration today. And so that's roughly uh, um, the background for sense. And, and today I'm going to um, um, present two uh, live demonstrations. Uh, first one, we're gonna focus on the uh, uh, layer two service. And uh, so uh, for People are not familiar with uh, um, the layer two. Um, so layer two services is, is um, uh, it's like your uh, 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 Ethernet connection end to end. So um, this is a, a connection dedicated to you. And we provide uh, uh, like guaranteed bandwidth. So it's typically it's going to have a uh, low latency and no jitter. So it's uh, it's very good for uh, for large transfer. And so um, in the um, in today's demo, I'm going to actually start with uh, my with my web browser, um, and and after this demo, I'm also going to present the layer two, I mean layer three service. From our service, I'm going to use uh, the REST API. I'm going to use command line. But by, by doing both, I can just show you all the all the possible combinations of uh, you uh, provide different different services or different APIs or interface. So this is the uh, sense uh, orchestrator um, and UI. So what you see in this screen is uh, the visualization. So um, in, in this diagram, actually, this is a topology of our uh, sense test bed, and we have a good uh, visualization system. We can actually look at all the other um, uh, systems here, and uh, like all the network domains are in the sites, and in, in the sites you can see the those DTN servers, and everything is based on um, model information. So you can uh, go very deep to say exactly. What's, what's down there, and so it's all based on uh, uh, modeling and information. And so um, my uh, first number today, I'm going to demonstrate uh, a, a single and uh, point-on-point uh, layer two service. I'm going to create one and uh, layer two VPN over VNet from the uh, Euro Mariner and DTN uh, across ESnet to uh, uh, and then across the uh, Scenic into a uh, Cartech DTN. So uh, we have a service catalog which has a help us to compose our services. Um, so this, then, so for today's demo, I'm going to do this one from scratch. And um, that's typically how we get started. So get a service catalog, and uh, there are a different category of services we can do. So um, for since we're more focused on the uh, dynamic network uh, connection. So go in there, we can say there are three types of uh, connection services we are supporting right now. And there are a multi-pass point-to-point VLAN. That's what we're going to do today. We can also do multi-point VLAN bridge. That's basically multiple terminals and put them on the, on, on the same uh, uh, Ethernet uh, broadcast domain. And we can also do a uh, multi-point layer three VPN. And so for the um, for this and uh, point important connection. So first I'm at one connection here, All right? So and uh, it's gonna have two terminals. Terminal one, I'm gonna pick from my um, my directory, the uh, contact put here. 
learn from uh, here. We also get uh, a Merlin here. So I use we don't take any on both sides, which means a system is going to pick it for me. So from what ever is available, so it's going to pick randomly. And for this layer two, I'm also going to assign the IP addresses on both sides. So once it's uh, created, we can actually start uh, to try and pass traffic or we got manual uh, uh, configuration. And um, let's do a, um, a curious profile. For this one, we, I want to guarantee capped, which means it's a hard capped service and your uh, hard capped uh, binaries. So you can only do this much binaries. Uh, anything beyond is can be capped. Let's give it 5G. We can also do scheduling, but um, but in, in this case, I'm just going to make this uh, happen immediately. And uh, uh, we are suggest an IP range for uh, assignment on both sides. And if you don't do this, then it's going to be assigned automatically out of uh, a dynamic pool, uh, which we define in our, uh, our information model. But here, I'm just want to give have more control. So I'm going to put this um, uh, manually use, uh, based on my uh, memory. Okay, so we have this service being composed and um, as uh, uh, from this um, form. So you can submit, you can also save. You can save, you can save into a, a profile which you can use again and again. In this case, I'm just going to submit to make it happen. And, and <laughs> Give your name, um, let's say Caltech to UMD, any winner. And let's give it actually the IP for, for the hint of the L3. So submit. So that's gonna get, get into a catalog to get it kicked off. And now um, what we can do is uh, I can show you how we manage an app and nav cycle of a, a service. So in the creation stage, right? So um, first step, the service is going to be uh, interpreted and uh, then going through a campaign process, which actually goes through all the orchestration to compute resources and to figure out well, uh, how, uh, which resource to select. Then we're going through a two uh, two phase uh, commit uh, process to uh, to uh, propagate the service to all the uh, resource managers to uh, do distribute distributed transaction. And then it's going to commit in parallel to make things happen. And that means the uh, resources will get allocated. Uh, so during this process, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, we can actually say um, all the information is in the, um, in the, um, in the, in the, in the and table, right? So this is the way we also use to um, um, track and, uh, uh, every event happening in the, in the system. And this is a uh, going, if next time you got some trouble, you got some problem. This is a place you're looking to trying to figure out uh, where the, the problem is and uh, what the nature of a problem. And so uh, we have also applied uh, tools for us to actually um, navigate across the, um, uh, the service you have just created. And uh, for example, the one tool is a, um, so here's real quick, it's already created. And when it says ready, which means not only in the service is committed, but also uh, from our real-time model, uh, we, uh, we get feedback from the system. We can verify those uh, information has been applied in the system and uh, it has been pulled up from the model channel. And so now what we can do is we can, so with relation, we can actually say, um, let's go here. So in a big visualization window, we can just say um, how uh, individual resources have been used for this service, right? So here we, we talk about we're going to go through the uh, um, uh, Maryland. And uh, we use a uh, uh, YesNet, yes, uh, Scenic, and we go through a uh, um, Cartag. So what I can do here is you can use your uh, your um, visualization and tool to um, look into which resources have been involved in, the, in this uh, service. So uh, I'm not sure how this looks in a, in a room uh, video, but uh, here on my screen, I have a bunch of uh, resources have been highlight, highlighted by the by yellow color. You can see basically um, 
the trace of the resources have been allocated um, and verified in this uh, uh, visualization uh, window. And for this individual uh, um, service, can also look at its uh, um, um, verification. You can actually look at uh, the the resource per service, but you can, can actually look and look here. You can actually say uh, only the resources allocated for this uh, this service. And this another very uh, useful tool is called Manifest. And this actually tool, um, the um, if you are using the uh, application um, client, right, uh, through API, you can actually um, and to query and to get a manifest. And because we just said, for example, uh, we tell the system where we are asking for any VLAN uh, on both ends. We do not know exactly what they are going to get. So now from this manifest query, we can actually say when VLAN 36 uh, two uh, has been allocated to Caltech. And if we go down, you can actually, actually pass over of, the, of your allocation, you can say and uh, the same uh, VLAN has been allocated also to the uh, to the other end. But if you, there's any VLAN translation in between, you can also go and say all the details. And besides, if some network segments they um, they are doing um, because we are asking binaries, but not necessarily all the segments doing that. Some segments like when you say if if asking for guaranteed QS, I'm, I can only give you best effort. In those cases, we can always say from here. And also some uh, some segment will do scheduling. If you are asking forever, but nobody's going to do since forever. They may just say forever for, for me mean, just means one month. Then you can say it here, All right? So so that gave you the service. Now you could go to a, a data plane. You can uh, verify. So this is a, a site and um, from uh, uh, this is a DTM from the University of Maryland, and we just um, checked our. Um, just check our um, uh, manifest. It says uh, V9 3602. So this is what we get here. And if if we go to let me let me copy the address, which is dynamically allocated from the service. Then let's go to the um, Caltech side. You can also say the um, service has been um, activated with V9 Tiger signed for 3602. On the contact side, so now you can pin across. Yeah, about uh, 70 milliseconds of DNA. Yeah, so so that's the layer through uh, service here. And when you are done with the service, you can basically just do cancel. That's going to um, and terminate the service and put uh, put the resource back. Um, but when the service is terminated, you can always bring them back. Uh, if you, if you're not deleting this, you can always reinstate the service. Um, so that's a layer two. Uh, so we go back to our slides. I have, a, I have one uh, screenshot here, which is a uh, uh, which is a, um, the experiment our, um, my uh, uh, colleague um, and just has did uh, a last slide. Actually, he gave a presentation to uh, to the CMS uh, and team this morning. I think some of folks are also here today around me right now. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I'm going to skip the actual uh, performance test uh, because of time. But uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, this screenshot, you can see uh, uh, why we are uh, using sense near to service in, in this case. Uh, so he was uh, using exactly the same uh, two um, two sites, uh, UMD and Caltech, for this uh, for this uh, for this experiment. So when you are using the uh, public interface and the have a tra traffic sent over the public internet. So this is a, the, the binaries, the, tra the throughput you are getting. So on those two shoulders, you can, you can you start a service uh, before and after. And the shoulder, you can say, this is, a, this, this is, is your performance over, over public internet. So then once you switch or your um, transfer service over the, the census, since uh, dedicated QS, uh, Guaranteed, there are two paths. You get a much better performance. Um, so let's uh, we have a hard um, QoS guarantee here, and, and one important um, implementation is 
if you are using uh, 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 sometimes you're using the same interface, but you can use different VLANs for uh, for um, uh, both the uh, sense service and the uh, uh, public routing service, and then you can use sense service to guarantee your traffic really gets through with not much bandwidth. Uh, and uh, yeah, in some other demos previously, you can you can basically show uh, if if you are doing the transfer at the same time. Once you start a sense service, you can you get a constant um, and finally, for sense, then your base effort service is going to get squeezed. So this is really, really important because we are not only need to guarantee the finally from the wide area network like ESNet. A lot, a lot of times you are actually you're going to be competing with others, and sometimes intentionally, sometimes uh, not intentionally, but you're going to be competing with others even from your uh, in the host. You really want to have some guarantee there, especially for some mission critical services. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to um, proceed to uh, my next uh, uh, demonstration, which is a uh, uh, Layer 3 VPN. And so, for people who are not familiar with a uh, uh, Layer 3 VPN, uh, you can uh, just imagine Layer 2 is your end-to-end uh, -end and dedicated Ethernet connection, just like a 49. And Layer 2 VPN is your, uh, is, uh, your private uh, uh, overlay of IP routed service. All right, so here. I mean, and typically, people is going to probably use a uh, layer two for uh, for a high bandwidth transfer, uh, but it's uh, more uh, expensive, more limited uh, by the uh, by providers, and also um, it's more suitable for small group uh, of devices. And there, there are three uh, VPN is an overlay which can uh, serve a, 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 a larger a larger group and is more scalable. So here, um, my demonstration is going to involve uh, four uh, indersides. And so for those four indersides, uh, we have Fermi, we have Caltech, and we have uh, uh, University of Man, also we have a CERN in Europe. So I'm going to demonstrate we're going to create a single air VPN service uh, in one shot. And that's going to uh, give you the, um, the overlay across all those four sides. And so, uh, I mean, there are many ways to do uh, Air 3 VPN in, in the real world. And since has a, uh, in, in this time, we have a very uh, specific uh, uh, scenario. And so because at this point, uh, ESNet uh, is not in dynamic uh, Air 3 VPN yet. So we simply just uh, realize that you know, we, we are going to uh, have some pre configured Air 3 VPN segment already in the ESNet. So what I'm going to do is, uh, 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 we're going to have a uh, sense to set up and um, the four layer two tunnels. Those basically those four separate point to point layer two, layer two services. Just get a, a tunnel from uh, each of the side into the and uh, the air two, air three VPN and segment in the, in the ESNet. So if I look at my um, uh, catalog, I can say we already have four layer two services be dynamically set up by sense. And so from here, uh, we're going to create a layer 3 VPN by dynamically and config all the other segment. Like on every side, you can, you can config the layer 3 VPN routes and, uh, and uh, make sure you, you can um, route it across all of them. Um, so uh, for um, for sense, actually, the, the main the main work here we're going to um, based on our our um, model and, and information we're going to say okay we have a, we could have a more than one and uh, there's three VPN segments already in ESNet. We're going to pick the right one for our service to be attached to. Also, we're going to use the, uh, the proper uh, stitching to uh, stitch our um, other segment dynamically from those sites into the uh, into uh, the the uh, pre-configured VPN we select from uh, from ESNet, so all the um, routes will be uh, configured dynamically on the uh, in the sites across the layer two tunnels, and uh, they'll be auto configured on the on the DTN hosts. So this is a um, the multiple point uh, layer three VPN. So let, let me get this uh, started from my uh, my terminal because as I said, I'm going to do this um, uh, using the um, 
using the uh, API client. So we can do an um, is that same thing from the uh, web GUI. So this is uh, how typically like the uh, the applications can do if you are using the uh, your program code or using your script. And first of all, let me just show you how the nearest three VPN intent will look like. It's very simple, right? So we ha you have four endosites defined here. Those, those are like the identifiers for your, uh, for your DTN hosts. And for each one, we associate with um, the identifier of IPv4 prefix. It can, it can be also be a more than one, but here we, we only use one. So the intent is we're going to create multi-point there's VPN, and uh, hope, hopefully since you can take over the rest uh, work, right? So make all of them be uh, routable across each other. Okay, so let me get it started. So if you do this from an API, just uh, remember we uh, when we do it, uh, do this here, we have to uh, the um, and the API call uh, one by one. And if you do this from a, a web GUI, then everything is taken care of from there automatically. Uh, so this is how it's typically your uh, your application is going to work with Sense, and uh, if you are doing a REST API, uh, so, and so the API itself is going to take care of uh, the uh, authentication, authorization, and also the the API exchange. Uh, so let's do the uh, intent for Neos API across all four sites. And uh, the first step is going to call, uh, create what we are. What, what really happened here is uh, the service is going to be uh, sent into a uh, sense northbound. There, this whole um, intent is going to be interpreted and computed through the uh, orchestration process. So it can take a lot of computation. So what you say here is that actually the model generated by, by this computation, right? So you, you start from very simple description of an intent. You end up with a very complex uh, model through the intelligent uh, computation. And this is, this, this is your first step. So what happened here is that you got, you got your, um, uh, you got your uh, service be uh, compiled. And then the second step, we're going to push this to uh, the uh, interface to a, a, a reserve call. So since it has a, um, a transaction based on system, it, uh, it, it uses the two phase commit. So the first phase of, tra uh, of transaction, we're going to um, propagate uh, this model to cross the all the uh, resource managers uh, in the distributed transaction uh, um, uh, handling, right? So that, that way we can guarantee uh, if uh, uh, if uh, we 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 uh, we we say yes, everybody say yes, then then uh, we we, ha we have a uh, agreement. And if any of those uh, RMs uh, does not agree, then we can roll back. So this is pretty much a, a, a soft reservation. So after this, we're going to do um, the hard reservation, which is basically a commit stage. So this is stage where the um, the allocation and uh, happens. So this normally is going to be a, 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 a longer process because this, this is a phase the all the uh, resource managers will, will actually uh, allocate the, uh, the uh, resources. And so we, uh, through the API, we actually we, we provide both uh, synchronous and asynchronous um, 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 modes for, for, um, for commit. Uh, so you can imagine for some other operations, like for uh, like uh, allocating uh, VMs or or create uh, uh, like a direct connecting to Amazon, Amazon Cloud or even uh, bring up a bare metal machine, it takes much longer time. So in that, in, in that case, you may not want to wait, but want to just uh, file and then leave and come back to check, check status. So we also gave you not, uh, uh, not async uh, kind of uh, operation, but here we just using uh, synchronous and to wait for it to finish. And once, once it's finished, uh, we know the service is ready for, um, uh, for, for, for the, for the uh, user. So we come in here. So now we can see the service is committed, but we're still waiting here because uh, um, 
we not only wait for service being uh, committed to through API, but also make sure uh, all the model we, we hear back from the from RMs are actually actually what we are expecting. So we are not right now we're in the actual verification stage. Let's wait for all the model comes back so we can make sure the service is actually get activated. So that will typically get, take uh, um, um, take uh, like uh, a one minute or two. Uh, so yeah, let's just wait for a little bit here and and go back to the uh, visualization. It's the same process. You can actually see uh, all the um, information from the uh, from services being showing up here. So in the two, you can start saying. In this case, because we're not actually receiving back the model, we are not showing enough uh, um, highlight here. Let's go back here again. Just wait for yeah. So now service is ready. You can basically um, yeah, you can basically visualize what you get, but also you can use manifest to to navigate the the, the, the service result to say what routes has been installed on each of those uh, sites. Okay, let's go to a, a data pane for uh, the verification. Here we have a uh, user remnant. And what I do here is, uh, you can see here, three for this specific uh, DT node, uh, three routes have, have been um, configured, uh, each uh, responsible for taking the traffic towards uh, one, one of the other three in the sites, uh, we we also have a, a local. Uh, this is this manually configured previously. We have mo uh, have a local namespace uh, used to just just pretend we have a we have a, a routing segment here. Um, so we can do a pin test from uh, from this uh, routing uh, from this namespace towards all other uh, uh, routing areas. So here we are pinning the uh, from the uh, Maryland to Caltech to Fermi and to, uh, to CERN. Yeah, as, as, as you can say, for people who are not familiar with the uh, Air 3 uh, service, um, I mean, it's given a lot of flexibility for, for, for IP ranges, right? So for, for layer two, you have to put every IP address in the same uh, broadcast domain. But here you can have a, have a separate uh, uh, address uh, um, prefixes that makes uh, the, the address and much easier. Okay, so that's uh, uh, all the demo for uh, today. And I think I'm, we have about uh, uh, a little bit of time for, um, for uh, q and A. I I also have my uh, sense uh, colleagues here, so if, uh, they can also help me answer all the questions. Any questions? So uh, this is Debbie. I have a, a question. Could you um, maybe give like a, a real life example of um, like circumstances in which someone would want to use this kind of a high level example of um, when, when someone might really want to take advantage of this? Right. So, and um, yeah, so I sort of put a little bit of um, uh, highlight uh, here, but uh, um, and since um, uh, is a um, um, is a middleware is a uh, mediation layer, so basically uh, for people who are doing uh, the uh, service uh, which requires to uh, cross a, a, a network layer, right? Um, uh, typically, like a data transfer and data movement and uh, the data caching, and so they can use sense for um, and to um, to get a, a high quality. And network services dynamically. Um, like uh, one example here, I, I just mentioned about the like um, the Big Data Express, uh, which is a, a data transfer tool uh, from a uh, you know, Fermilab. So they integrate the uh, Sense API client. So when they um, negotiate a data transfer, so they're going to um, 
then we're going to add, uh, allocate uh, their uh, local storage uh, and transfer resources on the uh, on the DT nodes. At the same time, they're going to negotiate the uh, the white area and, and connection from a sense. As I, I just talked about, from a sense, you can get a, a QoS guaranteed and dedicated layer two service. So, so, so that's a service they can actually leverage for uh, for, for for large transfers. Uh, so um, then um, there are other um, uh, potential uh, use cases like uh, you can um, integrate things into um, um, data data caching system, and and uh, also I just heard uh, this morning like people uh, from CMS um, they are planning to also use things for um, to integrate into uh, FTS and uh, and Lucia um, systems so you can use use that for uh, as their um, and the, the base layer of a uh, of a network uh, uh, data transfer, and yes, but beyond beyond uh, just networking and uh, as we described, sense actually is a uh, is a semantic model based system. Uh, you can actually integrate into the system more than uh, network elements. You can integrate into the system the clouds, which we already have, and uh, HP cluster storage, and I mean, anything you want to automate. And uh, sense is really an uh, automator of uh, automators. So basically just put those things together and try to uh, reason about well, how they should be connected and what kind of services they can support and what kind of capabilities they have. And then we can make a decision from here to, to, to make things happen across all those uh, resources. Great, thank you. Uh, there are a couple of questions that have come up in the chat window that um, I can just read uh, out to you, perhaps. Um, okay. yeah. Annette asks, is this something I can use in a web app today? Uh, yes. So, um, so I mean, since has its own uh, web um, GUI, you can actually um, uh, you can actually use a uh, uh, sense web GUI to actually do the orchestration. Uh, my important point here is that uh, since is not actually a uh, Single orchestrator. So, since architecture is, uh, the, when we type an orchestrator, uh, maybe the um, the diagram here is actually misleading. But actually, since is a many-to-many and architecture, which means you can you have many orchestrators uh, work with many resource managers. So everybody can be a, a service consumer. Everybody can be a service provider. So you can actually deploy your own sense orchestrator and work with uh, any resource managers you, you, have a, you, have, you have a trusted relationship with. So then uh, we, we do have a very good uh, uh, web, web GUI uh, you can use, but at another time, if you want to develop your own, I mean, we have an a, 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 a open API. So everything we do here, we, we, we use our own API. You can also use our API to develop your own uh, web GUI. But for, for this one, we already have, uh, we, uh, we serve a lot of features, uh, uh, authentication and authorization. You can use a CLR gun to get in. You can, you can do role man management, and this is the role based uh, um, uh, access control system. You can do a lot of uh, different things for different users. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. And okay, I say also it's a goal to release capabilities like this to uh, end the researchers, and uh, which yeah, if I understand that question, you're asking for um, and the uh, by end the researchers, you, you mean that you mean a scientist? Uh, yes, I think uh, as I just said and. Um, this, this uh, capability is eventually going to be used by the scientists, but uh, we're not ex uh, expecting the scientists is going to use this directly. And think uh, uh, we hope that we could, uh, they can work with the uh, uh, with the uh, administrator um, to uh, to use this. And uh, it's not necessarily a site administrator because for site administrator, they, uh, we can work with them to to make an initial deployment. Right? You need to actually have the software on your on your system. And to make it work, those, those agents will be deployed and be be, be monitored uh, for them to be uh, working uh, normally. Um, but at the same time, I, should, I think uh, it takes uh, uh, some uh, uh, minimal hand holding for uh, uh, 
for integrated sense into your workflow, into your uh, existing uh, tools. Uh, for some uh, users, you may, you, may, you may want to come to a, a, a sense um, orchestrator uh, web UI to do sense directly, which is also possible. We, 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 we give you uh, your, and, uh, uh, we can actually help you compose those intents. You can use them again and again without doing any modification. And th those are, are, are certainly possible. But once, uh, once we get a sense and, and, and ready, I don't, I, we, uh, we, we hope you can just use your existing workflow um, without, without actually talking uh, to your uh, satellite administrator unless you got, you got troubles. Uh, to add a little bit uh, to Xi's comment, uh, technically it's possible. But uh, we don't want the end users to overstepping each other. So uh, yeah. it's more like a, a, a authorization policy. So we can probably work on the policies uh, as time goes on. Yeah. And okay. yeah, thanks, Alex. And also the uh, question about extension to uh, cloud providers. Actually, uh, uh, as a sense project, we do not have. Uh, we, actually, we did not have the um, the uh, responsibility for cloud. But as a software, actually, we do support AWS, Google, and Azure uh, from Microsoft. Uh, we, uh, we, our primary, primary support is for AWS. We support uh, the direct connect services. We also support uh, some uh, um, unlimited uh, uh, services. You can do VPC, uh, EC2, and uh, S3 uh, from, from the Amazon Cloud using your, your own account. Uh, our support for Google and uh, Microsoft is uh, is more limited than AWS, but we do have some uh, early work there as well. Uh, so yeah, so if anybody is interested in that area, I think uh, certainly a future extension will will will, will include your uh, requests. Thank you. And and HPC centers. Uh, right, so um, HP centers, we are, right now, I don't think we have uh, an sense deployed to any production and service yet. Uh, we have, uh, we had access uh, sense uh, um, resource managers, um, uh, some of those uh, um, uh, sandboxes, like we had one uh, at, uh, uh, at the DTN server um, in, in NERSC. Um, but right now we're not actually have, uh, doing um, a, a production deployment to HPC centers yet. But our hope is uh, we can at least start some uh, uh, some parallel uh, deployment, which means that we can actually uh, put one experimental uh, box next to its uh, its uh, uh, um, production uh, DTNs, so we can have both them to mount the same. Uh, uh, storage and, and if some user want to have want to take this as a as, as a risk production, they can actually use this uh, uh, to to try some uh, some different uh, network paths. And yeah, we are right now. We actually not uh, we had done, done some um, preliminary research in, in another DOE project called Rains for how to uh, use um, the NIST software stack to work with. Uh, like uh, an HPC scheduler, but it's um, it's only for uh, the information modeling. Uh, we haven't done anything uh, for actual provisioning. Any other questions for G and the Sense team? All right. Well, uh, I think we can wrap that up. Thank you very much. Um, that was a that was a great presentation, a great demo. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Please join us next week. Uh, we'll be talking about and doing demonstrations of various data management and data movement tools. Thank you.